Tropical Storm Aaron is here, and it is forecast to become a major hurricane over the next five to seven days, which does seem like a very doable ceiling, especially the further west this system can go. And generally over the next five days, as we've been discussing, it will continue to track off towards 60 west longitude, and that's where we hit the fateful fork in the road, and we're going to talk all about that today. Welcome back to the Mobile Weather Center. I'm out of my hot home base. Thank goodness here for another Weather Center segment. Thank you so much for tuning in on this Monday afternoon, Monday evening, wherever it is you're popping in from. Thank you so much for taking some time to join me here in the Mobile Weather Center. We're going to talk all about newly formed Tropical Storm Aaron, which maybe was a bit of a delayed reaction in my opinion, based off of the conditions and the unfortunate events that took place in the Cabo Verde Islands over the last 18 to 24 hours, we'll touch on that briefly. We're going to talk about what this system has in store for us over the next five, seven, if not even 10 days, because we're going to spend a lot of time with this feature out across the Atlantic Basin. And then we still have a large portion of a bit of a busy phase of August to get through before maybe during the last five to seven days of the month, things shut back down for a little while before September naturally ramps back up as we hit September 10th, the peak of the hurricane season. So thank you all so much for taking some time to join me once again for leaving such wonderful comments. Hello to all of our new subscribers. If you are brand new to the channel, please kindly hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to all of us here in the Weather Century community. Let's give that like button a little nudge. we got to get this information out there because we have an active storm on the board. So now we are officially tracking, and this looks to become our first hurricane, if not major hurricane hurricane of the 2025 season. Let's share this info with those you believe would benefit from it and drop me a comment in the comment section down below after you're done watching. Let me know where you're tuning in from, if you have any questions that you would like addressed immediately, or if you're concerned with not only what Aaron is doing out there, I want to help to alleviate as much stress as I can, but also let me know what you're thinking in terms of the rest of August. And we still got to rock through September and October. So first and foremost, let's go over National Hurricane Center's homepage, shall we? So we're going to go left to right here. We'll save Aaron for last. This puppy popped up earlier this afternoon as of the 2 o'clock advisor. We have a random trough of low pressure is what they're calling it in the northeastern Gulf. That's what helped to kind of increase our shower and storm coverage for many of us from Louisiana all the way through central Florida up into the Carolinas yesterday. It is still continuing to do so. We're actually seeing heavy rainfall over the Gulf Coast with a few instances of flash flooding ongoing thanks to the torrential rains this is bringing. It mentions that center stage there, locally heavy rainfall could produce flash flooding and all that fun jazz. Not too sure why they even put this out there, though, maybe for, you know, to get eyes on it. They're giving it a zero zero shot of development over the next two to seven days, but at least we've got something on the board. Yesterday it was, again, looking a little more robust, but hey, at least there's something to watch in the Gulf to get more eyes on it as things go go downhill for many of us from Louisiana through to western central Florida. We also had this pop up. It's far up into the northwest Atlantic in AOI, another one with a 10 for 10 shot over the next two to seven days. This tries to do anything. This here, alongside remnants of 96L, are what I do believe our global models are latching onto. They're not in a hurry to get out of there. And I do think that's what's helping to weaken our subtropical high, our Bermuda Azores high over the Atlantic and give us that corridor to hopefully curve Aaron up and out to sea the faster it continues to deepen and intensify. This is going to meander for a little bit. If you notice that formation zone, it's kind of just almost a perfect circle. The steering pattern is a lot weaker currently, at least until we can get a couple of mid-latitude features to move over upper North America, pick this up, and scoot it on out to the east-northeast, just like remnants of 96L. Again, another 10 for 10 split, very weak trough of low pressure located over the central subtropical Atlantic, going to slowly continue to meander northward models have lost all confidence this does anything but regardless as our next mid-latitude feature an upper trough and low pressure down at the surface help to pick these features up we're going to see the western extent of our subtropical high in the atlantic and that negative pna the subtropical ridge that is already building back up over the south and east united states create a corridor between bermuda 
and the east coast of the United States. And that brings us right on into Tropical Storm Aaron. This is the first advisory. We had an intermediate advisory pop up. We'll get a new cone at 5 p.m. This is the 2 p.m. CVT advisory, which is going to be, you know, the time zone closest to Africa. We are still west of 30 west longitude. That's how far out it is. And if you look between 2 p.m. on Monday, before we even get into the details, 2 p.m. Monday out to 11 a.m. Saturday, and this thing is barely getting into range to where we could see that large dispersion and not only our global models because the global models are still struggling with this they are very heavily discontinuity between whether it's going to continue westward and then curve or immediately curve and kind of arc up towards bermuda passing just to the immediate west of that island which is exactly what we've been pinpointing it's going to be close we're going to be splitting hairs by the time this makes it to 60 west but at that point if you noticed furthest to the left of the forecast cone we've got that capital m Major hurricane is anticipated. The half A and B models, the H Wharf and the H Mon, do get this thing cranking to a sub 950 millibar hurricane. It's only a matter of time. Once it crosses 50 to 60 west, we're going to find even better conditions than where we are right now for this thing to more or less rapidly intensify. We're finally seeing our first rapidly intensifying storm of this hurricane season. The current advisory puts at max sustained winds of 45 miles an hour moving west, due west, at about 20 miles an hour. So it's moving at a fairly steady pace, and we want to get it further and further away from the CV Islands as fast as we can. Here's a quick glance at that true color visible satellite shot. Fairly impressive system. If you look closely, and I'll go ahead and pause the loop at the very beginning so we have a little bit of that daylight still out there. We're getting that Terminator line to pass through. But let's take a look. Let's decipher this together. So there is our center. Might be just a little lopsided. I think our convection is a little biased to the west, thanks to our rock and easterly jet coming off of the Africa continent, helping to spur this and decouple it from the ITCZ, that monsoonal trough configuration. If you recall in yesterday's video, I mentioned don't pay too much attention to all this stuff happening to the south. That is that convergence zone and an extension of our African monsoon trough coming off the coast, being bullied further westward thanks to that easterly jet in the 500 and 300 to 200 millibar level. Level. But in terms of the storm itself, doing fairly well for itself. We've got a very nice closed center of circulation. We kind of had one since yesterday, early yesterday, to tell you the truth. It's managed to self-sustain thunderstorms near the vortex for an extended period of time. There have been about five to six fatalities reported thanks to the heavy tropical storm-like impacts out there in the Cabo Verde Islands. And unfortunately, we didn't have anything out because this wasn't a classified system. It wasn't even a PTC. And that's all I will say about that. I'm not going to step on anyone's toes but now as you can see we have that symmetrical shape beginning to form up the convection is kind of lopsided but the center is right in through here somewhere beneath that cirrus dense overcast and we're starting to get a little bit of that trademark transverse banding on the north side and on the south side indicating we're seeing a few different outflow channels blossom we're gonna have to see what this does once the sun sets however because we're moving right into an area of very stable conditions you look out ahead of it and you can see both open cell and closed cell strata queue and cumulus just downstream of it right in front of it which typically indicates dry sinking air that's the saharan air still coming off and then we also have the extension of our bermuda azores high that promoted the sinking for much of the first half of the hurricane season but it's still doing okay for itself now, where is it going? I know that's what on that's what everyone's mind right now. It's the forefront of my mind as well. Does it have a chance to come further west, or will this be a quick and easy fish storm curving away from 60 west? I want to say right out of the gate before we talk ensembles, the hurricane models continue to trend this further south and west. It only goes out about four to five days, so we're still not in the range to see when those hurricane models are going to try to lift it towards the north. But very interesting, if you take a look at our latest Euro ensembles, and I had to roughly pinpoint where the half suite puts this system, it's down here, the southernmost extent of your ensemble members per the Euro if you were to compare your hurricane models to the Euro ensembles. The global deterministic models are also starting to trend a little bit more southwesterly before we feel the weakness in the ridge and we give it that little nudge to start curving more northwesterly as opposed to west-northwesterly. However, I caution, we are going to want to watch this. It's way too early to vote it off the island right now, even though I know a lot of you want to and as other sources out there saying we're going to. I don't feel comfortable in doing that just yet. Very low 
chance this does anything besides wreak some havoc on the Turks and Caicos in terms of outer lying conditions, outer lying impacts, and the feeder banding around this system. But the Canadian model, the Euro AI model, and a few of our other computer models to include the UK model want to try to bring this thing a little further west, northwest, before we start to see that curve. So I would recommend especially the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast, Bermuda, the Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos should watch this closely. Florida is still in the running. The GEFS, the GFS ensembles today actually do have a number of members. And in fact, I was joking around with my friends behind the scene in a tropical chat I'm a part of. The tightest concentration of our ensembles actually do continue it west-northwest into the Bahamas. I'm not going to fast forward from here, however, because I want to show you even at the seven-day mark, the huge dispersion, the huge spread in our ensembles, even seven days out. And if you notice, even at seven days, we are still tracking this thing, and this is when it finally comes into range to possibly make a run for somebody, whether it be Bermuda or cutting the difference between Bermuda and the east coast of the United States. Atlantic Canada should be paying attention. Nova Scotia out there. I know I have a few of you watching from up there as well. You'll want to pay attention to this. So let's not take our eyes off of it. We're still barely off the coast of Africa, and a lot can still change change. Remember, the models may be locked in right now, but there's still features coming off of Asia, over the North Pacific, Alaska, Western North America that some of our upper air observations may not be capturing just yet. So as that comes into range in the next three to five days, we'll have a much better picture. And believe it or not, even three to five days out, this feature still will not be at the same longitude line as the Lesser Antilles. It'll still be out there in the MDR. So we've got plenty of time. Let's not go wish casting. Let's not go down casting. Let's just watch. We've got an active system out there and let's pay attention to it. That's all we can do now. I'll show you real quick what I think is going on with our global models. If you take a look at the GFS, this model has a tendency, a bias as it's called, to underestimate the strength of subtropical ridging. And if you notice here, we're looking at a fairly meridional pattern. If you've all tuned in for the last couple of updates, zonal means more west to east. Meridional means more north to south. It's the meridional patterns that allow these features, whether it be tropical cyclones, local weather phenomena near your neck of the woods, to curve or to dip further south at a moment's notice. When you have more zonal flow, naturally, since we're moving with the steering pattern being the winds, we would move more east to west in the tropics, more west to east in the mid-latitudes and the subtropics. In this case, we start out with predominantly zonal flow, but if you notice, the GFS has an enormous weakness in our subtropical ridging right through there, and that's precisely where the model begins to curve this feature. If we take a look at, for example, the Euro AI model, which has a better track record with your background atmosphere, we're talking your large-scale synoptic, if not macro-scale features, which take up whole continents, you can see here the shades of light red really do extend back into the Atlantic, which is why before that weakness shows up, it is probably coming. We'll have to continue to watch what moves over in upper North America, but we can confidently say there should be a weakness there. It's just timing on that. And if you look at the AI model, we have a bit more of an aggressive subtropical ridge out there. 594 decameter line, whereas on the GFS, we can see that weakness is more exposed. You have that 594 directly over top the eastern Gulf in Florida, and those shades of red are non-existent. Even the Canadian model, which today actually did did throw us a bit of a wrench. It has it moving further west now, has a stronger, more amplified ridge out there over the eastern seaboard, a weaker shortwave moving through the northeast and Atlantic Canada, and a very amped up subtropical ridge pattern extending up into the Icelandic and Greenland areas. And that's why, for example, I'll show you the Canadian model, a big change. I'll show you 0Z first just to give you some continuity. If you track the system through, it immediately makes the curve once we get beyond 60 west. Notice it makes a run for Bermuda and then maybe the northeast United States as that mature wave, that deep occluded low, moves off of Quebec, Atlantic Canada, off towards the east. Remember, the zonal flow will allow it to move faster, bringing down an area of maritime polar high pressure or continental polar high pressure over the upper Atlantic, which will then try to bump it back west. If I were to switch you to today's 12Z, 
Notice the massive difference. We're now much closer to the state of Florida, and that high pressure has come down off of the Atlantic coast much faster. Canadian model may not be that great with tropical features, but if you think about it, Canadian, it's going to do a little bit better with those polar features, the mid-latitude low-pressure systems and your polar front jet. And on top of this, we don't want to discount the fact that we're supposed to be under fairly zonal flow, neutral NAO, which means we're not going to be all stopped up. Meridional patterns, north to south jet streams typically slow these type of features down, like a traffic jam. When you're more zonal, think of it like you're cruising late at night or first thing in the morning. There isn't a lot of traffic out there, so you can hit cruise control and just maintain your speed. So we'll have to pay attention to that. We're not quite to the end of the road just yet to where we know yes or no. We don't have to really watch it after this point. we got to continue to monitor, at least for the next three to five days. And then I'm also going to be tracking what else comes off of Africa because we have more MCS features expected to turn into our tropical waves over the next 10 to 14 days. And you can see that here in our latest probabilities from the Euro. There's the signal for Aaron, and then off the coast we have at least two, if not even three more tropical waves that could turn into our next named storm candidates. We could be watching for Fernand and Gabrielle. Those are the next two names on the list, and where we stand currently with the MJO still in its favorable setup, we very well could realize an additional named storm or two. So just... Got to keep checking back. That's what these recurring tropical updates are all about. I'll shoot straight with you every step of the way, and I'll let you know when it's time to hold on to your butts or just, you know, kind of get ready to. Right now, we're still at DEF CON 4 of hold on to your butts, if you want to call it that. It's stage 4, where we've got an active storm, but it's too far away for us to really worry about it, and it's too far away to really make that judgment call of yes or no. We don't want to, you know, back ourselves into a corner. Leeward Islands, U.S. British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Go, and then further west from there, we got to watch this very closely because you all receive it first. And then from there, we can continue to dial in if we're already starting to curve northward or if somehow this thing's being nudged further to the west. So stay tuned for more, folks. Thank you all once again for your generous comments. They've been wonderful to see, very inspiring, and that's why I'm going to continue this grind. I'm going to continue model watching. I'm going to continue forecasting. I'm going to continue to watch these trends as we go over the next five, seven, ten days because... First long tracker in a while. Truthfully, we had Barrow last year, and that's pretty much been it. This is going to be our next long tracker we've had in the hurricane season for a long time, over a year now. We had some during the 2023 hurricane season that definitely went on to impact almost no one except for Hurricane Lee. And if you all recall, we were tracking that thing for almost two weeks. So we've got a long haul ahead of us. This is where that phrase, it's a marathon, not a sprint, comes into effect. And we'll talk to you again very soon. But until next time... This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.